Well, I'm sitting in my office on Wednesday, and tomorrow is Monday, Thursday. And I've reflected many times on how different this Lent and Holy Week uh, has been for me and probably for everyone. Uh, Holy Week is usually filled with a service every morning, our usual healing service and communion on Wednesday and Monday, Thursday service and Good Friday liturgy in the morning and then the seven last words 12 to 3 with area pastors. And it's usually just such a full week and such a wonderful week, the Monday, Thursday service being one of my favorite services uh, during the course of the year. It's just wonderful. We begin uh, thinking about the Lord's uh, Supper and uh, as the service progresses and we move into uh, reading Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And uh, conclude with stripping the altar. And it's usually just such a blessed time for me and a very thoughtful time and a very prayerful time. Uh, the blessing of this Lent and Holy Week is that I have had more time for prayer. And so I've been intent on praying for our church for you. I've been praying for our healthcare workers and those who are working because they have to and take care of us, those who aren't working and are struggling right now, and the, the anxiety and the lack of peace and the, and the worry that seems to consume a lot of people. Uh, most people are also paying attention to the economy, which could exacerbate uh, what everybody's feeling and wondering what's going on with uh, the government and the checks that might be coming. There's just so much to think about. And yet at the same time, life goes on and what that life looks like for most of us is very different. And my prayer for you in the midst of it is that you learn how to adjust and find balance in this new time. Uh, and I'm not saying it's easy uh, because I'm used to being with people, uh, which is a real challenge for me to not be with people. I love being with Meredith. Uh, that's a blessing. And we've been Zooming with our children and grandchildren and uh, I've been calling people and that's been a blessing, but I'm a hugger and I like being with people and I miss that personal contact and faces that I look at, including in service when I'm preaching, uh, because worship to me is such a gift. <clears throat> but one of the other things that I've been thinking about is what do I typically read in addition to my daily reading and, uh, and during Lent more uh, devotional reading? What do I read when I'm going through troubled times or what do I think about? And I think about uh, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and uh, Psalm 46, be still and know that I'm God. And Psalm 91, which is the Eagle's Wings song for those of you that know that, that and how encouraging that is at this time. And Psalm 121, I lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that made heaven and earth. Uh, looking up to the hills in that psalm is about idols. And we've had a lot of idols knocked down over the past few weeks that we rely on for our peace and filling our time. And <clears throat> so this is an opportunity really to focus on the Lord and focus on relationships and maybe do those projects that we've been putting off around the house and, and uh, maybe just being quiet a little bit, which is hard for some of us. And I know I encouraged last week to operate with wisdom. Uh, most of us need to go out from time to time and trying to use wisdom when we do go out so that this virus uh, eventually begins to curtail and go away, at least for a season. And we just keep praying for a cure and uh, also for, uh, for it to be minimized and possibly for a vaccination. Uh, in the meantime, our healthcare workers, our first responders and those who are working are more at risk than most of us. And so uh, we need to pray for them. But tomorrow, as I mentioned before, is Monday, Thursday. And when you hear Monday, that's an old word and it's based on mandate and actually two mandates given in scripture for uh, what we are to be about and for that particular day. One is do this in remembrance of me. And it's very difficult to share in communion uh, with one another when we're not sharing at the table together. And I miss that as well. Uh, because it's the family gathered. It's the foretaste is the heaven of the heavenly banquet, which is what scripture says and what our service says. And uh, we're not sharing in that banquet, that family meal, that time in holy communion with the Lord and with each other together. <clears throat> and you could have a reminder out for you on 
Easter Sunday about that, maybe bread and uh, wine, just as a reminder uh, of the gift that Jesus gave in himself, because doing this in remembrance of him is about remembering the gift of Jesus, the gift that the Father gave us. God so loved the world that he gave his Son. The gift of salvation and eternal life, which is really what we're to be about. And he has us, and I keep saying that, and I will keep saying that. He has us because he loves us, and that's why Jesus went to the cross. The other mandate given on Monday, Thursday, that John records in his gospel, love one another as I have loved you. And Jesus, uh, right before that, washed their feet, the lowest of the low servant role, out of love for them, and to demonstrate what sacrificial love looks like, at least in part, because he would go to the cross to show fully. <clears throat> but the other is, uh, he would say, greater love has no man than he laid down his life for his friend, which Jesus did for us. And so we, uh, we choose to be thankful during this time for the gift that Jesus has given us uh, to hold us in this life and to keep us for all eternity. And so these two mandates uh, on Monday, Thursday, is what we really focus on, that we remember Jesus and the gift of salvation, the gift of love, the gift of eternal life, and that he has not only made us, he sustains us and he encourages us. He sends his spirit to comfort and strengthen us and bring us peace and love and even joy at this time, and that we're to love one another. And during this time, it requires us to be a little more creative in how we spend our, our time together, uh, <clears throat> maybe in person for some, but usually telephone, uh, Zoom, FaceTime, uh, and possibly an email or snail mail, whatever way you can be creative in loving other people during this time. And my prayer is that this virus comes to an end in the next week, two weeks, possibly month, uh, however long it takes. And that in the midst of that, we're able to, to love the Lord and to grow in that relationship and to love one another in creative ways during this time. Let's pray. Lord God, as we remember Monday, Thursday, and of course, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, we truly remember the gift that you've given to us in Jesus Christ. And on Monday, Thursday, what we call Holy Communion, holy because you have set it apart, that meal for us, a meal that reminds us of the gift of Jesus, communion with the Father through him, that it is a love restored, a love blessed, a love that fills us and overflows onto others. And communion also means union, not only with you, but with one another, and continue to remind us how we can be creative in sharing union with one another, that maybe we even hug one another with a prayer, as well as with words and with our face uh, in some creative way. But Lord, help us to continue to seek to love you and to use this different time to grow in that love and to love one another as you have loved us. Amen. And I pray in Jesus' name, that you would continue to be at peace as much as possible. Just allow the Lord to change the focus of your mind, <clears throat> which can rob you uh, by anxiety and worry and uh, rob you of the present, rob you of relationships by being worried and anxious and allow him to fill your mind, uh, transformed by the Holy Spirit, to focus on the blessings, the gifts. And, uh, and I hope to see you soon. God bless you and keep you.